building a little bit in the third class of the, the blogging boot camp series. And then social, we actually have a class tomorrow, um, social, we call our pose and pray marketing class. So all of these kind of things are what make up search engine optimization, but at the base is going to be quality content and then the ability for that content to be accessed by the search engines. Okay, Can they get in and find it? And when they find it, are we putting it in a format that they understand and that they want to return to the people that are doing queries on their particular search engine? So there's a, a concept that I want to make sure everybody kind of understands. And we'll, we'll look at this concept a little bit more in depth next week. But as we talk about search engine optimization, I think it's important for us to understand this concept of the long tail. And if you guys were in front of me and I would say, how many of you have heard of the long tail? And you know, I would get probably half of the room when we've done this in the past live, we would raise their hand, maybe a little bit more as the, the, the months and years go by. Basically what the long tail says is, and let me, you can look at it on the screen here as it relates to search, but in the real world, I think the best example of the long tail is how Amazon sells books. And so, when Amazon set out to become the number one bookseller in the world, they realized that at that point, if somebody wanted to buy one of the big top ten selling books, right, they, they generally before Amazon went into like the local Barnes and Noble or the local Border Bookstore, and that book was available on the shelf. But when Amazon started to look at book sales, what they realized is that the top ten selling books at any time make up about 30% of the sales. Okay, so these books, the Harry Potter book, it sells, you know, 2 million copies or the John Grisham book sells, you know, 1.5 million copies. Those top 10 books at any given point are selling about, are making up about 30% of the sales. But what Amazon realized is there are literally, you know, 99.99% .99 of the other books that are available for sale at any given time are making up 70% of the sales, but any one of those books does not sell very often. Okay, so you've got books out there that sell 10 times a year, or sell 15 times a year, or sell eight times a year, right? Those books, Border or Barnes & Noble couldn't stock those books on their shelf, because if a book only sells 12 times a year, it doesn't make sense for Barnes & Noble to take up shelf space for that book. But Amazon said, we don't have to put it on a shelf, right? We'll just put it on the internet. And then if we can sell all the rest of these books, if we can sell the book that sells eight times and the book that sells 12 times and cumulatively sell all those books, there's 70% of the sales sitting out there waiting to happen. But as you relate this to search, and a real basic example would be shoes, like we see here on the screen, okay? So people might go online and search, search shoes, right? And that's going to be very hard to rank for. There'll be more people doing that search. And then as you get out there further on the long tail, what happens is the searches become much more specific and it becomes easier to rank for that sort of a search. So in real estate markets, in any given market, so Seattle or Los Angeles or Omaha, Nebraska, okay, there's going to be about six to eight terms that make up 30% of the search volume. These are terms like homes for sale in Omaha, Omaha condos, okay? We're not, with our blog post today, going to be able to rank for those phrases. It would be awesome if we could, but we're just not able to do it. Because the big boxes, the, the Barnes and Nobles of the real estate space, go after those terms. So you've got this close, the .coms, the real estate .coms, these sites that have millions of pages. They've got listings from all over the country. right? They've got teams of SEO people that are spending you know, the high amount of cost and competition associated with those terms. But in every single one of our markets, there are these long tail terms where any one of those terms, so let's say it's condos for sale in Omaha, right? That's the, the, the short tail, the, the popular term. There's going to be all kinds of other searches that are, that are done with Omaha and condos in them, like Winsong Park Condos, Omaha, Nebraska, right? A very specific sort of a phrase that's not done very often, but cumulative, cumulatively in your market those terms come together to make up a large percentage of the traffic. And so we're going to talk today about how do we target these kind of long tail terms. And next week we'll really get into what are those long tail terms. How do we figure them out? How do we break them down? How do we, how do we go about writing blog posts that kind of target 
these terms. Today we're going to just learn the fundamentals of writing a post that ranks in the search engines. Okay, so how do we get found on page one of Google? We've got kind of four tenets, four things that everyone kind of post is going to be thinking about these things, and at the end we're going to have kind of some, some additional things that we want to make sure we get in the post. But these are the first four things that we need to really hammer down on with every single post that we write. And 200 to 500 words, I don't have a, the rest of these I'm going to break out in their own individual sections. 200 to 500 words, this is not a hard and fast rule, okay? It seem, and, and kind of based on the evidence that, that I've seen, if you write a post or piece of content that's less than 100 words, you're going to have a hard time getting it to rank in the search engines. Once you kind of hit that 100 words, Google will index that content and put it up. But then you have to start to think to yourself, okay, just because I can get something to rank in the search engines, does that mean that it's going to be valuable to the person that finds it? And what we're really trying to do here is we're always balancing can we get this to rank with when somebody actually finds this piece of content, is it going to be of value to them? Am I going to be able to demonstrate to this person that I'm an expert in this subject that they just searched on if I only did it in 100 words? I would challenge you to, to really be able to prove that you're an expert in anything in 100 words. It's almost impossible, I think. And even as you get closer to two words, it becomes challenging. I'm writing a post about a particular condo building, and we're going to look at some examples like that here in a little bit. But if I'm writing a post about a condo complex, in 200 words, can I answer all the questions you might have if they were Googling that condo complex? Again, still pretty challenging. As we start to get up to 300, 400 words, it may seem like a lot, but it's not really when, we're, when, when I actually show you kind of how these things break down. You know, once you start to get over 500 words, right, if you go over, it's not going to be the end of the day, right, they're not going to not rank you because of that. And in fact, in some of the more recent Google updates, Panda and Penguin, there's some indications that the more wordy you are on particular subject matter, especially if the words all kind of relate to the subject matter, which would make sense if you're blogging about it, right, that's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But what starts to happen is if you've got thousand word dissertations about something, right, it might make sense to break those things up and maybe have some different posts on, this, on a similar subject. So 200 to 500 words. We're going to pick a keyword phrase for the title and we'll talk about that. We're going to repeat the title at the start and the end of the piece of content and we're going to use our keyword phrase three to five times. So pick a keyword phrase for the title and it literally next, in, in the next class in this series, which will be on Thursday, we will do a whole hour about this concept of how do I figure out what I want to write about? How do I understand what keyword phrases I want to target? But simply, you're going to have one keyword phrase per blog or per page. Okay, so every time I write a blog post, I need to be thinking about the title of my blog post in terms of it being a keyword phrase that somebody might potentially search for. Okay? And any one post that I write should be targeted at one keyword phrase. Now, I may consider different variations for subsequent blog posts. So let's say that I was doing, you know, the Windsong Condos for Sale in Roanart Park. That was my keyword phrase, Windsong Condos for Sale in Roanart Park. Okay? And, and I'm writing a bunch of stuff, and I got a bunch of great content in there, and all of a sudden I realize, man, I got a thousand words about Winston Condos for sale in Roanoke Park. I might consider breaking that up into two posts, and for one post type targeting, you know, Winston Condos for sale, Roanoke Park, and then the other one targeting condos for sale in Winston. Right? So I need enough content to break it up into two. But I wouldn't want to have my title be, you know, Winsong Condos, Roanoke Park, comma, condos for sale in Roanoke Park, comma, you know, Winsong Condos, right? I just a phrase for every blog post that I write. Now, your keywords are almost in a feel like a folly of having almost and then always in caps right next to it. But when you're gearing a post to rank in the search engines, you want to include some form of geography. And one of the best, 
as an agent, there's all sorts of things you could write about that would be just as applicable to the person in Seattle as they would be to the person in Omaha. Okay, like tips for getting your home ready to sell. Right, and I see a lot of posts like this where the agent writes, you know, the title of the post is tips to get your home ready to sell. I would suggest you add geography to that. So tips to get your Seattle home ready to sell. What this does that it just gives the search engines a better idea of why I am geographically because as somebody sits down at their computer and searches, the person searching in Seattle for tips for, to get my home ready to sell and the person searching in Omaha for tips to get my home ready to sell, the search engines are going to show them slightly different things based on what the search engine knows about where they are searching from. Okay? Which leads us into the way that people search. And again, in the next in this the next class in this series, we'll really drill down on this. But there's this concept, and especially as it relates to real estate, that people will search, they will do searches on a search engine queries that include geography and subject. So homes for sale in a, a geography, right? Condos for sale in a geography. When we're thinking about the geography and the subject, the more precise our geography, the less precise our subject matter needs to be. And again, this is as it relates to the title of our blog post. So the more precise our geography, the less precise our subject matter. On the flip side, the more precise our subject matter, the less precise we need to be with our geography. <laughs> on, on, in the next class, we'll, I'll really break this down, but I'll give you a, a, just a quick example. So if I was going to do... A real precise geography, so that might be what, like a subdivision. So if I was going to do, you know, Candlewood Renton, Candlewood is a subdivision inside of the city of Renton. I've gotten a very precise geography. I can be less precise with my subject matter. So I could do a real general subject matter in the real estate space like homes for sale. So my subject matter, homes for sale, specific geography, Candlewood Renton, right, the specific subdivision. On the flip side of that, if I wanted to get more precise with my subject matter, I could be less precise with my geography. So in, in that example, if I wanted to just do, you know, homes for sale in Renton, but I wanted to get, so Renton being a very, you know, general geography, a city, I'd need to get more precise with my subject matter. So that might be something like homes for sale with three-car garage in Renton, right? The subject matter becomes homes for sale with a three-car garage, very precise. Right, and I can have a more broad geography like in Renton or in Seattle or something like that. Okay, and again, we'll really dive into keywords because it's a very important component of what should I be writing about as it relates to, to being able to get this stuff to rank. It doesn't make any sense if I'm writing about stuff that nobody's looking for. So once we've got our title, Right? In this particular example, the title is Riverwatch Condos, Burlington, Vermont. And if you look at that second result there, that active rain result, you'll see that in the blue on a Google search result, that comes from the title of our blog post. When we write a blog post on active rain, the title of the blog post becomes the page title, which becomes the portion that they click on in the search result. And then the next little piece of a search result that you see is in green on here, and it's the the URL, right, activerain.com forward slash blogs view forward slash Riverwatch Condos Burlington, Vermont. And you'll notice that the URL is based on the title, right? And you can see that Google, when, when you do a search, it does the same thing. It will highlight the words in there that match the query. So in this case, the query was Riverwatch Condos Burlington, right? Because you can see all those words highlighted that match the query. Now, the portion in there that's not clickable, it's not the URL, it's just the black text. That's what's called a page description. So Google is looking at a page, any page on the Internet, and they're trying to figure out the page description, and that's what they return as this part of the result, the part that's not clickable in the black text. We want to make sure we get our keyword phrase into, and on Active Rain, it's about the first 140 to 160 characters, but that first set, that first sentence or two needs to have our title in it somewhere, right? And remember, our title is our keyword phrase, so we're going to use that same keyword phrase somewhere in that first sentence or two of our blog post. We're going to repeat that title at the start of the post. 
I had a really good English teacher in seventh grade, I think. And this English teacher taught us that when we were, we were, I think seventh grade, you learned how to write five paragraph essays. Right? And if you had my English teacher, you would have learned that in a five paragraph essay, in the first paragraph, you tell them what you're going to tell them about. Then you spend three paragraphs telling them about it. And then in the fifth paragraph, you tell them what you just told them about. We're going to do something similar with our, with our blog post, okay? We're going to have that keyword phrase in the first sentence or two somewhere. Then we're going to write about it. And then we're going to repeat that keyword phrase at the end of our post. We're just going to tell them what we just told them about. Okay? If we get our keyword phrase in the first sentence, and we get it somewhere near the end in the last sentence, we've now used that keyword phrase two times in the body of the post as we work towards getting it in there three to five times total. So we're going to use our keyword phrase three to five times in the body of the blog post. And number three should probably be number one, but we're going to use that keyword phrase exactly as we used it in the page title, in the blog post title. Okay? And again, I'll show you some examples of this here in a minute so you can kind of pull all this together. But we're going to use that keyword phrase three to five times throughout the body of the post. Now these, number two, the, you need to make sure that keyword phrase ends up at the end of the day, once the whole thing's written out, you got all the content in there, you got everything in that post that you're going to have in it, you need to make sure that keyword phrase ended up being the most common phrase on the page. And if you use it five times, there's a pretty darn good chance it's going to be the most common phrase. But you just want to make sure that you're not using some other phrase more often. Because again, we're just trying to send as many signals to the search engine that all kind of line up to let them know what it is that we hope to rank for with this piece of content. Okay, so if, if we had a, a page title, but then in the body of the post, we use some other phrase more often, right? We're sending conflicting signals. So again, we're just trying to get all those signals to line up. And then does the body have similar content? It, when you're writing a blog post, it's almost impossible for the content in the post to not match the keyword phrase, right? Because if I'm writing about the, you know, the Roanoke Park or the Windsong condos in Roanoke Park, what would you expect to see in the body of that post? You'd expect to see things like, you know, how many bedrooms and bathrooms, square footage, homeowners association, right, garage, um, amenities, right? I mean, you're expecting to see words and phrases that relate to condos or to Roanoke Park. Okay, and again, if, as we write a blog post, it's almost impossible not to have that body have similar content. So let's go live in here for a second. I want to show you guys some examples. And it, we'll, we'll do some more of these examples and some kind of different variations on these examples next in the next session as well. What we're, what we're looking at right now is the back end of Active Rain's Google Analytics. And this is an analytics shop from about the last 30 days. And we're looking at phrases where somebody did a query that use the word condo in the query. Okay, and I've been mentioning Roanoke Park condos or um, the Windsong condos in Roanoke Park, right? This is an example that I've been using a couple of times here. And what we're seeing is the number of visits, right? Pages per visit. We're seeing some kind of statistics based on how people get to and find content on Active Rain. Now, this is one way that somebody found a blog post on Active Rain about a particular condo complex. Okay, Winsong Condos, Roanoke Park, CA. And as we come over here, and we would actually do the search, Winsong Condos, Roanoke Park, California. Okay, we're going to see her blog post coming up here in the second position. And what we actually see in the first position is same lady, Cynthia. And this is her outside blog. So she's been able, it's an outside blog and a post on Active Rain. To, to take these first two positions for this particular condo complex. Right? That's a pretty good place for her to be. And we know that the active rain position, you know, it got 15 visits just on this phrase. If we look at some other ways that people used Winsong, we see that there's a bunch of ways in here that people were searching for the Winsong condos, including some real specific long tail sorts of searches, condos for sale in Winsong, Roanoke Park. 
right? And that was only one visitor in the last 30 days, but that's, that's a visitor I want to be in front of. So let's look at the post itself. Here it is. Okay, so Cynthia's wrote, written a post. She's done Winsong Condos in Ronar Park, CA, 94928. So she added her zip code in here. That's probably all right. I don't know that a ton of people are searching using zip code, but then she's got her keyword phrase repeated. Okay, now we need to see how many times does she use this exact keyword phrase. And let's just do Winsong Condos in Ronar Park. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little command F up here, and I'm going to search for that. Oops. Winsong Condos in... All right, so I see it once, right? I see it twice. So as I come down here in the body of her content, she didn't exactly use that phrase that third time. Now, there's some places she might have done it behind the pictures, and we'll talk about the pictures here in a little bit, but she's only got two uses of her keyword phrase. Now, it's all right, right? She's out there on this long tail. She's still ranking for it. But as other people maybe get in here and start to try to rank for up, she really wants to make sure she's got this thing locked up. Let's look at her statistics. You guys can all get statistics by going to your My Home page and clicking on traffic on this particular post, the Winsock, Winsong Condos, Roner Park. We see this post 31 clicks on it. Now, this post was written in May of 2010. So it's about three years old, which means on average it's getting about 1,000 clicks a year. Okay, that means that this post was loaded in somebody's browser. Every click counts as it was loaded in a browser. So what is that, about 80 clicks a month? On average, she's getting, been getting 80 clicks a month this post. Now, this particular post, getting 80 clicks a month, on average over the last three years, it's not going to be like the end-all, be-all for her business. All right? But a cumulative approach to this could really be substantial for her. And so we see that she didn't just write about Winston Condo. She wrote about the Windmill Farms, which is a subdivision in her area, and it's gotten 1,000 clicks. So that's averaging about you know, 25 or 30 clicks a month. She's written one about um, pine tree condos, right? Not quite obvious. I mean, it's, this has gotten, you know, a quarter, but it's still getting, you know, 20 clicks a month. And, and cumulatively, what starts to happen is as you really start to zero in and target these real specific things around your market, it can, it can start up. Here's another example of a, Aspatuck Village Condos. Look at the post itself. She wrote Aspatuck Village Condominiums in Shelton. That's the keyword phrase that she's targeting. Okay, but look at all of the different ways that somebody landed on her piece of content. So that's a good one, right? Aspatuck Village Shelton CT Condos for Sale. We've got Aspatuck Condos for Sale. Aspatuck Condos for Sale in Shelton, comma, CT. Look at all these variations, tons of them using, right, Aspatuck Village condo sales. Look at this one down here. There was one really crazy one that I saw. Look at this one. Data on sale prices of condos in Aspatuck Village, Shelton, CT. Like, is this somebody that wants to, to either buy or sell a house? Absolutely. Right, and we can see the different Aspatuck Village condos, Shelton, CT. Notice her face is showing up here. I'm going to have Carrie right now send you guys. You can set up. This is called Google Authorship. Carrie's going to send you out a link to how you can set up Google Authorship. It's activeroom.com forward slash Google dash authorship. That link, that URL will, will give you instructions on how to set up Google Authorship for your Active Rain blog so that your picture will show up here in the results. So as a consumer comes in here, they're searching for Aspatuck Village condos, and they might not have done it like this, right? They might have done it in one of these other crazy long tail sorts of ways. Right? They're all being led back to her blog post. So now let's look at her post in terms of how often did she use the phrase that was her keyword phrase. So Aspatuck Village condominiums.
variations here, like Aspetuck Village condo. And the thing is, is Google, they, they kind of know that condo and condominiums mean the same thing. We still want to get in. Notice her pictures. She's using some, some word even on her pictures that might be helping her. But she doesn't get her exact match keyword phrase in there three times. So let me take you over, and I'm going to give you guys an example. And so this is an example post that we did, we do these classes called our blueprint series where we take things that give kind of a blueprint of how to write about them. So let's look at my example here. And this post actually ranks on the first page of the search engines right now for Plaza del Sol condos on Capitol Hill, um, which is kind of embarrassing in some ways because I'm not a real estate agent and this is a demo post. This thing actually needs. I'm sending them back here and in the third class in this series we will talk about calls to action and actually lead generation. This post has generated leads and it's really up for a little over almost two months now, a month and a half. This post has generated leads for me which again is embarrassing because it's like a demo site from Market Leader and that lead's never going to get responded to but <laughs> these things work. Okay, so here's my Plaza del Sol condos, Capitol Hill, and, and now let's look at how many times I use this phrase. Okay, so I've got it once, I've got it twice, um, and the, I use on Capitol Hill, so it's a real close kind of match there, so there's my third time. Okay, if I was to look behind my image, Plaza del Sol condominiums, front of buildings, so that's a, it's, I got it three, so I'm good in there, okay? I've got my three usages of my keyword phrase. The difference between this comma and like using the word on is, is negligible. There's, there's really no difference to the search engine, okay? So they see it as there, there's one usage of it, here's two usages of it, and then here's my third usage of it. And again, as we come back here and we kind of look at the Google result we see in our title, right, we see the keyword phrase, and that's going to be based on the title of my blog post, okay, which becomes the title up here at the top. Well, if you were to look in this tab right here, that's my page title. It says Plaza del Sol Condos, Capitol Hill, Seattle demo post. That's what they see as the page title based on the title of my blog post, right? It's the thing they make the clickable component here. Then we see you know, the use of my keyword phrase here, and we actually see it twice because I got it up there real tight two times at the top. And what kind of content would we write about in here? I'm just writing about the Plaza del Sol condos, okay? I'm going to give you a flowery description. I'm going to give you what the units are like, okay? I'm going to give you what the building is like. I'm going to give you what it's like to live on Capitol Hill. Now, I, I maybe could have got this thing to rank in 100 words, just done something really quick and dirty and short about Plaza del Sol condos, and it's up there on the first page, and I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Look, it's on the first page. But if when the consumer lands here, if they don't get the information they wanted from me, if, if I'm not proving to them I'm an expert, it's not going to matter that I ranked. Okay? If they wanted, if they wanted to see actual listings for sale right now in this area, right, I've got that link in here. And in the third week, the third class in this series, we'll talk all about this kind of call to action, this link. Where should it go? What should I be showing them? Right? The idea today is how do we get this content to rank? So there's a couple of examples. Again, we'll take a look at some more examples in class two when we look at keyword phrases. But here's kind of real life applications of, okay, keyword phrase, title of the blog post, right? Use it three to five times in the body of the post. One, two, and then I've used it here at the end, right? 200 to 500 words. And in this post, okay, when we think about that keyword phrase, am I, do I have other similar content in here? Heck yeah. I mean, I've literally written about the Plaza del Sol condos, right? They're converted condos, bedrooms, floor plans, HOA, right? All these words and phrases in here that kind of relate to my keyword phrase. Okay, so let's talk about some other kind of commonly missed opportunities to enhance the SEO on one particular blog post. 
or one particular piece of content that we've written. Okay? The first one is going to be photo metadata. Uh -huh. We're talking about the image description and the title that you give to any pictures that you add to your blog post. So every time you add a photo, you have a chance to give it an image description and a title. The image description kind of lives behind the scenes in the source code of the picture. And so when I upload a photo, let's say like that Plaza del Sol condos photo that I uploaded, whatever I use as the image description, that's what Google will look at to determine what that picture is about. So if somebody was to go to Google Images and do a, a search of Plaza del Sol condos, right, they want to find some pictures of the Plaza del Sol condos, based on my image description, would determine whether or not that image is potentially returned as a result in Google Images. We get you know, anywhere between 100 and 200,000 visitors a month come to Active Rain because of Google Images. So our members are doing a good job with that image description field. The title field, when you upload a photo, becomes a part of the keyword phrase that they're on the page. So let me kind of show you what that means here. And if I was to come in here and edit this, this blog post, you'll see as I click on this image and I kind of pull the image up, this is what we're talking about, is this image description and then image title. Okay, image description is what the search engines will see. And then the image title becomes a part of the keywords that get picked up on this page. So what I'd probably want to do here, because I only had three uses of the exact match keyword phrase, right? I had one, two, and then I kind of had this, and it wasn't even an exact match. It was really close, though, where I had on instead of a, a uh, comma, right? So there's three. What I could do is I could come in here and say Plaza del Sol condos, comma, Capitol Hill, Seattle. Now I've, I've, I'll update that, and now my picture, when I post this thing, the title line matches my keyword phrase. So that's an opportunity for me to get that keyword phrase onto the page. Oops, I select the channel and the topic. It's an opportunity for me to get that keyword phrase, that exact match, in there a fourth time, right? So one, two, three. See it there? Plaza del Sol condos, comma, Capitol Hill, Seattle. And then my, my fourth time down here, four. So make sure that those, that photo metadata is kind of giving the, the search engine indication of the picture, matches the content, right? We're just trying to get all those signals lining up to give the search engine a really, really great idea of what we're talking about. This next one, anchor text link using your keyword phrase. So again, in the third series, the third class in this series, we'll really drill in on this. But somewhere in the body of your post, you want to have a link that has anchor text that matches the keyword phrase that you use for the title. So in this particular example that you're seeing right here, click here to find loft condos in Belltown, Seattle. What do you think the title of my blog post was? Loft condos in Belltown, Seattle? That's absolutely what it was. And as we come back here and look again at my demo, you'll notice that I use Plaza del Sol condos, Capitol Hill, Seattle, as my anchor text for the link. Now, where does that go? Well, it's going to link over to a page on my website where somebody can find condos for sale right now on Capitol Hill. And if my site's really aggressive, I might be able to show them just the condos for sale in Plaza del Sol. But I want to be able to show them something real specific. And in, in the third class, we'll really drill down on this concept because this becomes kind of where the rubber meets the road, right? We can get people to our, our, to our pages, but now we've got to be able to get them to give us their information so they can become a, a prospect or a lead for our business. Right? But just having this link in here, because what this does is this tells the search engine, look, Mr. Search Engine, if you return this result in the searches, which they're doing, and somebody clicks on this result, which they've done, 
I'm going to give them another place to find good information about this subject matter. Which I do. Okay, so again, it's lining all these things up so we're showing the search engine, hey, we've got not only good content here on our blog post, but we're willing to give your searcher another place to find good content about this subject matter. Anchor text link using your keyword phrase. There's one other thing, and I don't actually have a slide for it. Maybe I do. Let's see. No, here, I just use an example here. So here's another example, and this is our sample post for subdivisions. So the one I'm showing you is about condo complexes. Another great thing you could be writing about is subdivisions. So homes for sale in the Kennedale neighborhood of Renton, right? This very specific geography, in this case, Kennedale neighborhood of Renton. But you'll notice down there towards the bottom, I've got my, my anchor text link using my keyword phrase. And, and the, the challenge becomes... A lot of you guys want to use like the word click. You want to do like click here to find homes for sale. I could have done that, but I, I want to get my, my link to exactly match my keyword phrase. So in this case, I did interested in finding homes for sale in the Kennedale neighborhood of Renton Law. Click that link to find all the currently available homes in this area of Renton. Right? I was able to, to, to get that sentence to kind of make sense to where the keyword is the only thing that I use for my link. One other, this is, a, this is kind of an extra for being here today, and I don't always talk about this. One other link that you can use, because one of the questions always becomes, well, how many links should I put in there? And I would say you don't want to have many more than three to five. And in fact, five would be the, the absolute top end. Three might be a more appropriate number. And what I've done here is I've got another link in my blog post that goes to something that Google finds authoritative on some component of my keyword phrase. Huh? Okay. My keyword phrase is Plaza del Sol Condos, Capitol Hill, Seattle. So what I want to do is I want to get another link in the body of my post that Google thinks is a good source of information for something related to my title. So in this case, I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to ask Google, Google, what do you think is the best result for the phrase Capitol Hill Seattle? And they're going to show me that this, this website right here, CapitolHillSeattle.com, is a really good result for Capitol Hill Seattle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this website, and I'm going to include it in my blog post, a link to it. So when I talk in my post about living on Capitol Hill, I say, this area of Capitol Hill in Seattle rarely has a dull moment and link to a page where you can get additional information about Capitol Hill in Seattle. Because again, I want to show the search engine that, look, my blog post has great information about not just the Plaza del Sol, but about all of Capitol Hill. Okay, then my last link down here becomes, again, another chance for them to, to find available Capitol Hill condos for sale on my website. Right, so link one, exact match pointing them back to a page in my site where I'm showing condos in this area. Link two, a link to something else that Google finds as an authority on what I'm writing about or some component of what I'm writing about. And then link three, this kind of closing call to action. And again, in our third series or third class in the series, we'll talk a lot about those, those calls to action. Okay, add an H1 or H2 or and H2 header tag. This is a, a little bit advanced, but it's not super challenging. Basically, what an H1 and H2 header tags do is, again, they just give the search engine additional information about what's the most important component of what we're writing about. So what you're going to do is you're going to have an H1 header tag on your keyword phrase. So in the body of your content, you'll put this H1 tag around the keyword phrase. And then you'll put an H2 tag around a similar but different phrase. So again, let's go back to the example. And as I come in here and edit this post, what I'm going to do, now if, if your eyes start to gloss over when I start talking about HTML and header tags, don't worry about that, okay? Do everything else and just forget about this component. Then once you kind of are, are really drilled down and you've got things working in the right order, you can always come back later and do this sort of a thing. But essentially, I'm going to come in here to the HTML 
And now it's going to be all this crazy, crazy lettering, right? I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put an H1 tag. So right now it's got an H2 tag. I'm going to put an H1 tag around my keyword phrase. So my keyword phrase here is Plaza del Sol condos, right? And I, and I get this H1 tag. And really all H1 tag is is I do less than sign, H1 greater than sign. Then I you know, put my keyword phrase in. And then I add the closing H1 tag, which is less than sign forward slash H1 greater than. Okay? You guys all see that? All right? Here, it's like here's my H2 tag, similar but different phrase, living on Capitol Hill. Right? And, and this would have looked just like this before. Right? And I would have had to come in here and kind of find where is this at, and I find it, and I say, okay, I know living on Capitol Hill is what I want to make my H2 tag. Now I've got tags in there on this on this post. Okay, again, if, if that kind of makes you go, huh, what? Like, don't necessarily worry a ton about that. That's kind of one of these things where we can still get it to rank without that, but this is just another little thing that we can try to line up for the search engines. Additional media-rich content and, and layout. Okay, now from a search engine perspective, simply from the from a matter of when I first post my piece of content, will having a YouTube video in there or will having a Google map in there help the content? I, I'm not going to say with 100% certainty that it will. Okay, what I will say is that having this kind of media rich content, whether it be in an embedded video or an embedded form, will Make a user, a searcher, right, something that comes to the search engine, they find our blog post, they land on it. When they land there, if there's this additional kind of rich content, it may get them to stay longer. And what happens is Google's looking at all these signals, and one of the signals is, you know, how valuable did the people that landed on this post find it, right? And in order to determine that, they're going to look at, well, how long did they stay here? So as I come, I think she had him. Yeah, so as I come to, like, Barbara's post about Aspentuck Village, right, and if somebody was reading through this and they got down here and they said, ooh, there's a video, let me watch this video, and they clicked on the video, they're going to be on this page for a while. And so if somebody did this search, right, they land on this post, and then they spend three or four minutes here, that's a pretty good indication to Google that this was a good result for that person, which is going to help us over the the long term or the lifespan of this post continue to rank. Right? And again, we see this post is from you know, 2010, but she's still ranking the top of the search engines for it. One of the reasons for that is that this post is what we call evergreen. And I want you to always be th thinking in these terms. When I write something today, will it be as valuable to the person who reads it a year from now as it was when I wrote it today. And if we look at her post, she's pretty general in here. This is good general information about this area, right? Now, if you want to find the currently available stuff for sale, she gives you a chance to head to her website and look for those cur current inventory. But what I see a lot of people do is they want to put a bunch of facts and figures in here, and they want to say, last month, condos in this area sold, you know, five condos sold for, you know, somewhere between 220 and 225,000. But a year from now, if somebody finds this post, that, that sentence is not going to make sense. Right? Maybe condos are worth considerably more now. So you really want to think in terms of being evergreen. And my example here is very evergreen. Right? I just, again, I talk about the units. Right? That's not going to change. They're not going to turn from three bedrooms into five bedrooms. Right? They're not going to change from 1,200 square feet into 1,500 square feet. I mean, that's going to be pretty consistent. Same thing with the building. Right? And I put it. Um, you know, HOA dues in here, and there's some variation in these particular dues. And, right, but I try to, try to give that, that evergreen sense where, man, if somebody finds this post five years from now, it's still going to be good, right? Because if they wanted to see the listings, I've got that segue in here for them to get to the listing. The one thing that I don't have in here is layout. And 
we do these blogging blueprint classes because I mean you can look at my post here the layout is a little bit cleaner than Barbara's and I, I'm not faulting Barbara she wrote these posts when she was really new to active rain and, and I would imagine that if we look at some of her more recent content it's, it's a little bit cleaner but the idea of having you know good white space the idea of having you know paragraphs <laughs> the idea of having um, your pictures in, in a way or a manner like I've got here where it's, it's nice and clean, that's going to convince somebody that lands there that, that you're an expert because it's professionally presented. And so you want to make sure that you, you really kind of try to find a format for these posts, really for all of your posts, so that when somebody lands there, it just looks professional. Okay, I would say like, I mean, this looks professional, but there might be a few too many pictures in here. I don't know, like, I want something just very clean, right? If I, if I want to give them more pictures, I, maybe I should do just a blog post that all it is is pictures of the Winsong condos, right? And then I can link to that. Hey, if you want to see more pictures of the Winsong condos, head over here, right? Where I've got my blog post just living with, with all the pictures. But in this first kind of intro post, this evergreen post, this one that we're going to try to get to rank in the search engines, Right, I want it to be nice and clean. All right, so what do we do next? Well, get a Rainmaker account. So if you're a Rainmaker on Active Rain, which is our, our premium service, your content will get indexed and, and made available to the public. If you have a free account on Active Rain, you can take these same concepts and apply them like to a WordPress blog that you have or something like that. But in, in order to, to utilize Active Rain and kind of the search engine prowess of Active Rain, you have to have a Rainmaker. I think give you guys a link right now that, that you can upgrade on a promo. That will also get included in, in the stuff that we send out to you guys after the call. Okay, create a list of 10 blog posts you'd want to write. Now, I don't care if you create a list of five or three or seven. Just create a list of a few things that you might want to write about. And I gave you some examples, right? The condo complex. I mean, if you have condos in your market, these are just a home run. We can get them to rank. We do the right things. Literally, like, like I said, that lead, that one that I created has generated a lead already. It's generated a lot of traffic too. Write one post using what we learned. If you don't write a post this week using what we learned, you're going to forget it. Okay? I mean, I, gosh, if you have time today or this evening or tomorrow morning, right? Write one post using what we've learned. Now I'm always obviously get signed up for next week's class, and it's not next week now, it's Thursday, right? We'll have the second class, which is keyword phrases. How do we figure out what kinds of things we want to target and write about? And then use this checklist when you write each post. And we'll you guys will get the recording to this. We'll send this checklist out to you as well, or it'll be included in the boot camp group. Here it is, right? Pick one keyword phrase. Use your keyword phrase in that first 160 characters. Use it three to five times. Make sure you use other similar phrases. And again, if you're writing a blog post, it's almost going to be impossible not to do that. Make sure that your keyword phrase becomes the most common phrase on the page. Get that H1 and H2 header tag in there. Make sure your image has proper description and title. Make sure you have an anchor text link, including your keyword phrase. And one thing you guys would add on there that I don't have on here is, you know, get another link in there to something that the search engine finds authoritative on that subject matter or maybe that geography right add video or maps if they're applicable if you have them Did I show this but these Google Maps I think Barbara uses them yeah so she's got these maps in here that kind of pinpoint where Aspetuck Village is right so somebody you know looking to figure out oh, okay where's the Aspetuck Village it's right there and I'm Man, I'm way out here. My job is in, you know, Trumbull. Oh, that's close enough. Right? I mean, just this kind of this extra interaction on there where they can kind of really drill in. Carrie will send you a link right now on how you can create those custom Google Maps. But again, don't get bogged down on all this extra kind of add-ons. Right? I don't have maps or video in here. It's still ranking on the first page of the search engines. And then share your post on social media. And this is what we call post and pray. Tomorrow at Active Brain University, we'll have a class about post and pray marketing, which is essentially don't just write a blog post, 
and then put it and then have it out there for the search engines to be able to find and hope that's what gets you traffic. We'll talk about some of the ways that you can share your content on social media, on Google Plus, on LinkedIn. You know, maybe you're even sharing it directly via email to prospects that you already have in your business. But we'll talk about how you can share this content so that it, it kind of gets a life of its own outside of just sitting in the search engines and waiting for somebody to find it. Okay, let's go in here now. We've got about four minutes before we're officially at the end of class. So I'm going to come in here. Terry says, can we have the link to register for the post and pray class? You absolutely can, Terry. You guys can kind of follow what I'm doing here. And I'll, I'll give you the link anyway. But So you go to activebrainuniversity.com or from the top of Active Brain, click the university link. You come in here to our classes section. The post and pray marketing class is going to be right here. You just click on that. Then you click register here. And you come over here and click on this go to meeting link. Or you would just put your name in there once you're there. I'm going to give you the go to meeting link. And Carrie may have already done that. Oh, there we go. Michelle's quick on the ball. So she just she just sent that out to you guys in the ch in the chat section there. Um, okay. So Barbara says those those phrases that you were showing um, are these phrases that other people have used. So I think she's kind of talking about like these phrases right in here. So this is the back end of Active Rain's Google Analytics, and unfortunately you guys do not have access to this, but we use this data to, to do these kind of classes. We use it for like our inspiration. If you go to the any page on Active Rain right here, where did inspiration go? Oh, this inspiration link right here, um, we give you guys, based on kind of the data that we have for our analytics, we give you all kinds, types of ideas and things that you should be writing about. This data right here, though, is these are searches that some random person did on Google that landed that person on Active Rain, and our analytics are tracking that. In the class on Thursday, I will give you guys a PDF download that has 500 variations of ways that people use the phrase homes for sale so that you can kind of apply it to your market because what you will see in there is you'll see stuff like homes for sale with a three car garage in Seattle. Now, you, if you're not in Seattle, you wouldn't write a post like homes for sale with a three car garage in Seattle, but you could apply that to your own market, right? If you were in Omaha, you could look through and see all of these 500 different ways that people searched on Google that landed them on blog posts on Active Rain, and you could apply those those concepts to, to the posts that you write. So someone asked, do photos and or video help with ranking if done well? Are there tricks in the labels to help them contribute? Okay, so here's what I would say about the, I don't have definitive advice to tell you or definitive knowledge or we've never done like extensive testing across this to tell you that they will help you rank better. Here's what I will, will say to this. And let's just see if this actually Yeah, you'll notice I don't know how she's tagged this particular this is Barbara. Same lady, right? Same lady we're looking at her condo stuff up here ranking, but she's got this video in here on YouTube. If we were to go in and look at this video on it could be helping her if she did when she created and uploaded her YouTube video. Now, she gave it a, a, the good title. That's good. One of the things I might have suggested to Barbara, when you upload a YouTube video, there's all sorts of other kind of tags and things that you can do to optimize a YouTube video. Had she done that stuff a little bit more, right, she may see her own YouTube video ranking higher in the results. But again, she's got the video in here, so is it helping her? It's probably, it's absolutely not hurting her, okay? But those things, again, it's just all little, and, and if you think about it, Google owns YouTube, right? So do they know that inside of this blog post a YouTube video sits? Heck yes, they know, right? So, you know, if you have video, I would absolutely be using it because she's got, you know, three pages, three of the top ten results. One, 
two, right? And then she's got this third, this third one. Oh, resolve. You know, I would, I would venture a guess that if we really start digging in here, she as well. Here's what, here, here's what I do. Whenever somebody asks me a question like that, I always want to know, is there something on Active Rain um, that's, that's written about this, right? So let's just see. Has anybody written in a blog post or given us um, you know, ideas about how we can optimize our videos on Active Rain or on YouTube to help our blog post. Well, I mean, this guy just not too long ago wrote about optimizing YouTube videos for the new Google algorithms, right? So that might be something that I would want to take a look at. Um, how to get more Google juice with properly optimized YouTube. Right, here's something I might want to take a look at. Structuring YouTube videos um, on, you know, for SEO, right? I mean, so there's some, some answers on Active Rain. We have over 5 million posts that have been written. If you have a question, you can probably get an answer on Active Rain. So somebody says, do you want to use the same keyword phrase for subsequent blog posts? How do you effectively serialize blogs that relate to a specific keyword phrase? This is a great question. Um, in our class on Thursday, I will give you kind of a blueprint for this sort of thing. But essentially, no. You don't want to write subsequent blog posts on the exact same phrase. Now, you can write them on similar but different phrases. But what you want to do is let's say that I was going to write some more stuff about Plaza del Sol. Where's my post about Plaza del Sol? Did I lose it? Well, let's just Plaza del Sol Capitol Hill. Okay, so if I was going to write some more posts about Plaza del Sol, let's say let's say this month I wanted to do a post about the uh, you know, how many condos were sold? So I was going to do like a market report type of a post on this condo building. Or maybe they were doing some remodeling and I was going to write about that. Or maybe I wanted to write a post specific to the homeowners association at Plaza del Sol and talk about some of, because like in this particular building, if you have a two bedroom unit, your HOA dues are less than if you have a three bedroom unit. And so if I wanted to do some other posts about Plaza del Sol, what I would do is in those other posts, I would link back to this post using my keyword phrase for this post out of that other post. So if I was doing, you know, the Plaza del Sol market report, right, in that post, I would have a link back that said, you know, for, for general information about, you know, click here for general information about Plaza del Sol condos, Capitol Hill, Seattle. So what I would effectively be doing is reinforcing to Google that I want this post to be the one that ranks for Plaza del Sol condos, Capitol Hill. Whereas that other post is going to be hopefully ranking for, you know, market reports, Plaza del Sol, or, you know, something, whatever I just determined I was going to try to get that post to rank for. Hope that makes sense. I'll dive into that a little bit more in the next class in terms of kind of creating this. It's basically a, you know, a wheel concept where your middle post is the, you know, is that central post. And all of the other posts outside on the wheel link back to that middle post. So you're really reinforcing Here's, there's actually a good example here that I can show you. Let me see if I can find the bar. I'll show you an example where she maybe cannibalized herself a little bit. Uh, if you me a hang with me, and I, again, I realize we're past the top of the hour, but you guys, if you have to go, I totally understand. I just, I get talking about this stuff, and I don't ever want to stop. Um, so let's get back here. So July 2010 is when she's written that post, so i got to find it in here. Somewhere in this range, so July of 2010. Okay, so here's Aspetuck Village, but I want you to come down here, and there's another post right here for Sunwood Condominiums in Shelton CT. And you see that this post has had 3,386 clicks on it, but a little bit before that, she wrote a post about a particular unit, right? Just listed, 262 Sunwood Drive, Shelton, Connecticut, spacious Sunwood condo. So she wrote a post about one of the units in this building here. And this post has gotten 1,281 clicks as well. So 
in this post right here, what I would have done is I want to would have made sure that in this post there was a link going back to this the main post, right? Kind of the evergreen post that will let them know, right? And she doesn't have that here. That let them know, hey, if you want to find all the information about the Shelton, Shelton Connecticut Sunwood condos, right? Go over here to this one. Where is it? Boom, Sunwood Shelton condos. Right? When she writes this Shelton, Connecticut condo market report, right? Again, this would be this market report post would be one where I would link back to that main post that I'd written about Sunwood condos, right? Because I'd have this what starts to happen again is in the middle becomes the, the anchor post, which is her which is this one. Right? And then these posts, this one and this one, right? They all link back to the anchor post, which is kind of telling Google, hey, look, this is the one, right? This post here, at the end of the day, is going to have 10 links coming back to it from all the other posts she's written about Sunwood. And this one becomes the one that really gets reinforced to the search engine as the primary one they should return when people are doing all these kind of, you know, let me come here and look, Sunwood. You know, when people are doing all these, look at all these crazy searches, right? We want that one to be the one that comes up. Right, Sunwood condos for sale, Sunwood condos for sale, Shelton CT, right? All these crazy little search phrases that have been done in the last 30 days to lead somebody back to her blog. That's a great question. Okay, here's what you guys can do. If you still have a question that's kind of specific to something that we talked about here, I want you to go to um, facebook.com forward slash active rain. Okay, you can leave your question, you know, you'll have to like the Active Brain page, and then you can leave your question on our wall, and I'll jump in there and answer it as thoroughly as I can at some point today. Again, I hope you guys can join us on Thursday where we'll talk all about keyword phrases, and sometime between now and then, write your first blog post. Just do it. Just do it. Otherwise, you just wasted an hour of your time with me, Carrie, Michelle, Chris, everybody behind the scenes at Active Brain. Thank you for joining me. My name is Bob Stewart. You guys have a fantastic week. We'll see you a couple times throughout the week. I hope. Bye-bye.